friends. Thanks for listening to Your Kingdom Journey. This is the number one podcast dedicated to bringing you breakthrough tips to guarantee your success on the journey to fulfill your kingdom destiny. Each week, I interview everyday people with world-changing stories. These are adventurous overcomers who have stories of breakthrough you'll want to hear and learn from. Why do I spend the time and money to bring you a free podcast like this? Because God has sown into me a passion to see people achieve their destiny. That's what motivates me as a life coach. I truly believe it's my assignment to lift you up so you can go further and accomplish more. I invite you to explore my website, claudiaclan.com, to sign up for podcast announcements or receive prophetic words and blogs, or even to see my latest painting. I'm also excited to share with you my new e-course called Dare to Discover You. This is a five-part self-paced e-course that combines my paintings of Jesus with spoken prophetic words and coaching questions and wraps it up into one power-packed experience. And it's only $19, which is $10 off for a limited time. Now get ready to take notes, unless you're driving, of course because my next guest will ignite you with hope and possibilities. Listen for the Holy Spirit-inspired tips in their breakthrough story and apply them to your own life. Hello and welcome to Your Kingdom Journey. I'm your host, Claudia Klan, with a very favorite person who I'm excited to bring you. Nee is... Well, he's got an amazing story. I'm going to let him tell the story. I should probably let him pronounce his last name, but here's my try. Adereti. Oh, that was good. How did I do? Not yeah, that was good. good. Yeah. Uh, Nee is, uh, of course, a husband and a dad. He's a minister. And I think his greatest gift is as encourager. And, of course, in those roles. He brings that gift of encouragement. I know Ni because I volunteered for a year in one of Bethel's ministries called Pastor on Call. Mm -hmm. And at that time, somewhere in that year, Ni took over the running of that organization. And uh, I got to know him. And he is an absolute gem, awesome, beautiful man of God. He's just the kindest guy you'll ever meet, and I am happy to introduce you to Ni Adorete. So welcome, Ni. Thank you, Claudia. This is a pleasure and an honor. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for having me today. You are so welcome. So Ni, uh, besides the fact that I know you through Pastor and Call, our visitors, our listeners, don't have a clue who you are. So what could you tell them that like a little short something that just could give them a real quick insight into you? Yeah. So my name is Ni, N-I-Y-I, and last name is Adereti. Or if you would say the way my mom would say it, it would be Adereti. That's how my mom would say. And um, I'm originally from Nigeria, born and raised, and um, moved to the U.S. in 2013 to do BSSM. So I've been here seven years now and married. I have two kids, a five-year-old and a three-year-old. And um, yeah, fun fact about me is I have lived in three continents. Now, that's not fun, fun. Um, I I grew up in Nigeria, (laughs) West Africa. I lived in the UK, in Europe, and now I live in the US in North America. And that's been fun to live in different cultures and experience um, different lifestyles. I can imagine that it was fun, yes, but also challenging. So you were, you know, you're still a young man, but how did you deal with that transition? Because Nigeria is very different than Reading. <laughs> yeah, very different. <laughs> well, I, I would say that because I, well, I, first time I left the country, first time I left Nigeria was 2009. I went to study in the UK and that was it. That was my first time leaving the country ever. And so I think coming to Reading wasn't, there was a bit of a shock, but it wasn't too shocking because it wasn't the first time I was leaving my own country. Maybe the, maybe the culture was a little bit of a shock just because I wouldn't say I was very familiar with American culture, apart from maybe American movies and things you see on the TV. That's what I really knew about the U.S., 
And so coming to live in the U.S. and living in, in Redding, um, small town, you know, lovely place, but a small town vibe. I come from Lagos where it's fast and loud and it's like a thriving metropolitan city. And I lived in London also that is, you know, beautiful, fast and multicultural. And I came to Reading, <laughs> which is, you know, a beautiful place, not the most multicultural <laughs> place. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was challenging. It is not one, yeah. multicultural. Yeah. I mean, it's changed the last in the last three, four years. There's definitely been an expansion as far as different cultures moving here. And that's been fun. Uh, but I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to be in Reading. It's a it's a perfect place to raise family because it's slow and quiet and not as busy as most other big American cities. So I love that. What's your favorite thing about living in California and Reading? Um, Reading, California. Well, one, I like the weather. So I like that it's sunny in California. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like snow. Um, I don't like too hot. And I don't like too cold. Um, <laughs> so, I th- <laughs> so I think California kind of gives you that balance. Now, Reading obviously gets very hot in the summer. Um, so, I mean, you, you have to just deal with that. And um, I like the small town vibe. Um, and I also, um, I just like that there was no traffic in Reading. <laughs> <laughs> so- it's so funny. The traffic thing is so funny because it's a family joke in our house because my husband will complain sometimes about driving around Reading and how it's growing and it's getting more traffic. And then we'll go to the Bay Area for something. <laughs> go visit a daughter. We have to go, you know, to San Francisco for something. <laughs> then you remember what real traffic is like because Reading is awesome by comparison. Mm. Oh, yeah. But the reason I had you on wasn't so much to talk about Reading. We could. I mean, we could make a whole episode mm-hmm. on Reading. Yeah, maybe, a lot maybe of some stuff. other time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, my focus, of course, is always to bring encouraging words to our listeners who are looking for tips to help them overcome and reach their destiny. And Encouragement alone is, of course, one component of it. The other is literally teaching what to do if you have this experience. The other is letting them take from these amazing people that I get the privilege of interviewing and listen and mine and dig around for the tips that are going to help them. So I know as a young man coming from Nigeria, through London to Mm -hmm. Reading, it couldn't have been a perfect, smooth, and easy ride the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I know that you've had your share of struggles. Is there one time in your life where, where you would like to share where you encountered difficulty and you either had to intentionally go out and find the answer through the Lord, or you had to grow and overcome something or get something new in order to do it? Wow. (laughs) <laughs> I could tell you several stories. <laughs> it's like, which one do I pick? Which um, one? one of the stories I, I think I, I've shared a bit with different people is maybe the story of, I'll, I'll share maybe a little bit about going to the UK for the first time and also coming to Reading. I'll just share tidbits on that. So before I moved to the before I went to the UK, um, I finished my first degree and I was kind of home and trying to do a couple of things and not really sure exactly what I wanted to do. And um, so just randomly one day my dad kind of asked me, So what do you want to do next? I'm like, Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out. And it's like, Have you thought about going abroad to go study? And I was like, Oh yeah, maybe. I've thought about it, but I I don't know if it's possible. I don't have the finance. We don't have the means to, to make that happen. And so it kind of inspired me. It was like, well, go look into it. So I had to, first and foremost, kind of overcome that inferior mentality, that limited mentality of, oh, this is not going to happen. This is not possible. I, don't, I had all the excuses why this is not going to work. The money, the time, the investment. And so I finally kind of, out of obedience to my dad, decided to just do some research. And during, during that time of researching and finding out about schools around the world, I just saw this part of me start to dream of, of what if, what if this is actually possible? And so I picked like maybe two or three that I really liked and sent in applications to them. And one of them stood out to me. 
and thankfully they had an office in Lagos where I was. So I went to the office to kind of just talk to somebody and I loved the atmosphere. Long story short is I ended up going to UK to study in that school. And that was fun. That was awesome. But that wasn't easy because it was like first time leaving my own country. That's all I knew. Lagos was mostly all I knew all of my life. And suddenly I find myself in a foreign country, a different culture. I mean, I'm kind of familiar with British culture because Nigeria was colonized by the British. So we do have some similarities, but I've never lived there before. And And so it was that shift into a foreign culture Mm. That you had to, you had, this was part of the experience you're sharing with the, Mm -hmm. with your breakthrough story. So keep Mm -hmm. going. Right. So moved to, um, moved to the UK and it was, I I loved my time in the UK, but the first thing that I had to confront during that time was kind of inferiority complex. I had no idea how inferior I felt personally. I just, I had no idea I had this fear of imperfection. And I had this feeling of not feeling good enough, not measuring up enough to other people. And so I found myself, I mean, I've always been an introvert, but during that season, I was actually very shy and very introverted, would hardly speak up in class. Um, Even if I knew the answer to the question, I would just keep my mouth shut because I was like, maybe they they won't understand my accent. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm as good as these people. And I saw all those struggles and challenges and, and I had to deal with that for for, for some time and pushing through that and just sticking th- sticking to why I came. I came because I was inspired by my dad to pursue something and my dad's dream became my dream. And now I have to push through all the struggles of feeling not good enough and do a great job because my parents have invested in me and they believe in me. And so I have to believe in myself. And during that season, um, I actually discovered so much more about myself. I actually discovered my creativity. I, I had no idea I was as creative as I was, but because I had, the only thing I was doing during that season was school. So I just jumped in into discovering more about myself. So I discovered my creativity. I discovered my passion and I discovered my passion for worship and music. And so in church, I just dived into worship leading and just serving that's that's the only outlet I had seven in church, and that was so much fun. And so that that was one of the things I had to overcome in my life, just that struggle of not feeling good enough. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here because I love that story, and I love the imagery of your dad's dream becoming your dream, and it challenged you to overcome. So, can we take from that mm-hmm. that the father's dream for us mm-hmm. there he's looking for us to buy into his dream it's an invitation right yep would you like to elaborate a little on that oh I've, absolutely i would love to um one of the things i've found out in life is you know sometimes we try to go on a journey by ourselves because we want to figure things out but sometimes god sends people our way that actually help us get direction for where we need to go so example, someone is praying, I want to know what God's will is for my life. I want to know what I'm supposed to do next. And sometimes you're so focused on that prayer that you're not paying attention to the signs around you. Because sometimes God will speak to you directly and tell you what you should do. Sometimes he's going to use people around you to show you direction. And in my case, it was using my dad to speak to me to say, hey, Nia, you're dreaming too small. I have bigger dreams for you. And it took a while for me to recognize, oh, this was God speaking to me through my dad. But the the thing I learned is just the obedience, the fact that I honored my dad and I obeyed him. And that opened the door to embracing this dream my dad had for me. And suddenly, as I put, the more I pursued the dream, the more it became bigger than just my dad's dream. It became my dream. There's something powerful about when your dad believes in you and when your dad calls you to an higher place. Now, there might be people listening to this wondering, well, I don't have that kind of dad. I don't have a father figure and, and that's okay. I'm so sorry that's your experience. Whether you have an f- uh, um, earthly dad, a father figure, a brother, uncle, a pastor, a spiritual leader, whatever that looks like for you, there's always somebody that God will put in your path to call you to an higher place. But the key is you have to be willing to humble yourself and surrender and actually pay attention to the signs. If God is trying to speak to you and you're not listening, then you're going to miss out on what he's trying to say. 
But if you if you position your heart in a place of, hey, God, I don't care how you speak to me. I don't care who you used to speak to me. I just want to live my life in full surrender to you. There's so much that you'll experience in God if you live your life that way. And that's what I've, um, I've been trying to do my life, just living in that place of surrender and just following God. And he just leads you on this beautiful path. He uses people like my dad and to just call you to a higher place in your life. That's a beautiful story, Ni, nee, because of course the a parallel with um, our earthly father in your case, or anybody who speaks into our life, but uh, but with our heavenly father. And the interesting thing is, he called you out of Nigeria mm. into London, and you know we could say, well, he was preparing you to come to Reading, so you're going from a predominantly black culture to sort of London, which was very, very uh, multicultural and interracial, mm-hmm. to you know Reading, which is predominantly white. And there's that process. So isn't it interesting that he would put you in uncomfortable places? Mm-hmm. And isn't it interesting that he would um, challenge you? And put you in a place where you began to realize how insecure in your abilities you were. And yet you chose to push through those and fight for your your own to prove Mm -hmm. to yourself first Mm -hmm. and foremost, as opposed to letting the fear of the not measuring up to those around you Mm -hmm. hold you back. Mm -hmm. And many of my clients are in that position. Mm. We're all constantly, I'm constantly bombarded with Mm. the the belief that I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing Mm. it well enough or right enough or hard enough or long enough. Mm. There's never enough, Mm -hmm. but we can't judge ourselves by the world, right? We have to just see what God's asking of us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's so, so true, Claudia. I, I went off on a little preach there, but <laughs> but your story is uh in, inspired me. Let me just let me jump on something you said. Um you you said about God prepare God's my moving to London was God preparing me for something else. And the other beautiful thing about that journey was I had no idea. Because if you had asked me five, six, seven years ago. I would have told you that my goal was to live in London, get married in London, stay in London for the rest of my life. That was my dream. That's all I could see at that point in my life because I fell in love with that place. I was like, I love this. I love London. I'm going to leave here. God has called me here. I knew I was called to ministry. And so I was like, God has called me. I'm going to build and I'm going to do stuff. And and that didn't work out, of course. <laughs> and suddenly I started feeling this pull in my heart to something else. And in the beginning, I kind of just ignored it and I pushed it away and I didn't want to talk about it. Like, there is no way I am leaving this place. This is, I mean, I've pushed through so much to overcome my fears. And now I'm finally trying to start to find my place. And I just want to set to here. And then I got to a point where I just started feeling there's something more. And that was scary to even think about entertaining the fact that there was something more. But one day, just one day after resisting and resisting and resisting, I just got to a point where the Lord just told me, if you just surrender. And that was a battle of the law because I was like, hey, Papa, I've given you everything. I, I think I've surrendered. I don't know what else you want me to surrender to you. But then I, in obedience, I finally just got to the place where I told him, okay, Lord, I, I, I surrender. I would do anything you want me to do. I would just tell me what you want me to do. And he didn't tell me what he wanted me to do, except that I just dropped an idea in my head in my head. What if what if you go to that school in Redding, California? That's all. That's all. And I just like, oh yeah, I know about that school. I've checked that website several times in the last two years, but I've never thought about going there myself. And it's amazing how finding myself now living in Redding, California. And just loving what God's doing. It's just amazing how one dream can lead you to the next dream. And the the, the grace and the strength you receive from overcoming the first challenge takes you and prepares you for the next challenge. Because you, you're building muscle to know that, hey, I've, I've done this before. This is not my first time going through this journey. And God has proven himself faithful that time. He's going to be faithful this next time also. 
I'm glad you did. That's great because that's so true. Mm. It's so true. And you know what, Nia, as I'm sitting here listening to you and looking at you, I have a feeling that your journeying may not be completed. Mm. That uh, that there is a new, there will be, I'm not saying immediately, but I, I think there might be another place for you yet to go with you and your family. I don't know. That might scare you. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to think about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't blame you. <laughs> what did you learn about Papa God in that whole journey? You know, you know, one of the things that, there are things that we learn as Christians and as followers of Jesus that sometimes don't make sense to us until we find ourselves in certain situations. Like, Things like God is good. People say that all the time. When I was growing up, it was kind of like a popular um, sl- um, slogan. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. But I don't think, honestly, I don't think we truly believed it. I think we just said it because it's what you should say as a Christian. Until you find yourself in situations where you have to actually find out, do I actually believe that God is good? Because if I look back at my time between leaving the UK and coming to Redding, California. That was a very hard season of my life because things were not working out. Everything was kind of going the opposite direction. And I would pray and I actually took time off to pray and fast because I was like, okay, I need to figure out what's going on. I need a word from the Lord. And I wasn't getting any word from God. And that was frustrating. You know, it wasn't, I was expecting him to tell me, okay, here's what you should do. Here's what I want you to do next. But he wasn't saying anything. The only thing I could, I think it was speaking to me were things I already knew. Maybe my favorite scriptures like Isaiah 6 to 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 10, and other scriptures that were like scriptures that I know and love. So I was just getting the same thing over and over. And in that season, I had to figure out, do I truly believe that God is good, that God is speaking to me and he's going to lead and direct me? Because it doesn't feel like that right now. But I can tell you, God is good and God is faithful because I have seen that in my life over and over. I can tell you story after story after story that just over and over and over, God has proven to me that he is faithful. And so every time I speak to people or meet with people, which is mostly what I do for my job, just talking to people on the phone or meeting people face to face, and usually people are sharing what they are going through, their challenges, their struggles, and I always tell them, you know what, God is good and God is with you. And I say that with all boldness, not because um, it's a fact, it's because it's an experience. I have experienced his goodness. I have experienced his faithfulness. And that's why I can tell someone boldly and say, God is good and God is faithful. He would never leave you nor forsake you because he never left me or forsook me when I needed him the most. Maybe his presence felt different in those seasons, but I always knew that he was there for me. And those are just things I learned throughout all the different struggles and challenges that I've been through in my life. And uh, I can hear the passion of that. And I Mm -hmm. am watching you get more animated as you talk about how good Father God is and how Mm -hmm. faithful he is. And when you can look in the eyes of someone suffering, because at Pastor on Call, we would see, you know, Mm -hmm. hurting people, that when you can look at someone who's maybe going through the worst thing, Mm -hmm. and you can say, because you believe it, with all your heart, that God is good and will never leave you. That has power to influence because it's not just a saying that you learned in church. It's like you said, from experience, and that makes all the difference. And so how will how will our listeners get that same true understanding? What should they do? What could they do? Good question, Claudia. Honestly, I can boil it down to just one simple step. And if everybody does this, if everybody practices this, I promise you that your life will experience transformation like never before. And it's very simple. It's just living a life of surrender. If you learn to live with your life with your hands open, not holding on to anything, you're just living your life every day of complete surrender and devotion to God. 
nothing, I promise you that nothing can move you. Now, it's going to shake you. You're going to go through experiences. I mean, the Bible doesn't promise us that everything will be rosy. I mean, James said, count it all joy when you, when you encounter trials. It's almost like the Lord preparing us for you are going to go through struggles. But count it all joy. How do you count it all joy? Very simple. Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. One of my favorite scriptures. Here is Joshua, uh, who was Moses', Moses assistant. And Moses, is, Moses has left, and now the baton falls to Joshua to lead the people of Israel to the promised land. Huge undertaking. I mean, those people drove Moses crazy. We're talking about Moses, one of the meekest, highly anointed, saw the face of God, experienced God's glory, face to face, 10 commandments, ETC. They drove him crazy. Now imagine you being Joshua, and now you have to lead these same people to the promised land. And of course, of course Joshua was, was probably freaking out, scared, wondering, how am I going to do this? But here is the kindness of God. Joshua chapter 1 starts with saying, the word of the Lord came to Joshua. It's amazing how God will always send you a word to prepare you for what's about to come. And yes, what God tells Joshua, hey Joshua, you are going to lead my people to the promised land. I know you are afraid, but do not be afraid because I am with you. I would never leave you nor forsake you. And then if you go a couple verses down, it says, this book of the Lord shall not depart from you or you shall meditate on it day and night. What was God trying to tell Joshua? Joshua, I am with you. All I need is your complete surrender and devotion to me. If you would surrender and devote your life to me, I will be with you and I will lead you to the promised land. And I truly believe that if every day we keep it's very simple. Surrender and devotion is so simple. It's not about how many verses you read. It's not about how much prayer you pray. It's the posture of your heart. It's the leaning in to the Lord, the softness, the tenderness of your heart, that the slightness, the slightest move of God, you respond to Him. Even if you don't understand, just when you sense His pleasure, you sense His presence, and you just pause and you say, God, I love you. And my life belongs to you. You wake up in the morning and the first thing from your mouth is, Jesus, I love you. I need you. My life belongs to you. I cannot do anything without you. That is surrender and devotion. And if we practice that every day of our lives, when things come against you, that's going to be your first response because it's become a part of your life. The first thing you respond with is, Jesus, you are Lord. My life belongs to you. I know you will never leave me nor forsake me. And so right now, even though I don't understand what I'm going through, I just know your presence is with me. My life belongs to you. And that opens the door for our hearts, our body, our soul, and our spirit to engage with the Holy Spirit in a deeper level. And it's like the Word of God says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you surrender to Him in the time of weakness, there's a joy that rises up inside you that is beyond what you can build by yourself. Sometimes we are working so hard to be joyful. We're trying hard to be joyful by ourselves when actually we yeah. just need to run to him and tell him how we feel. And just say, Jesus, I surrender. I need you right now. I cannot do this without you. It's amazing the joy that God will give you in that season that is bigger than what you can walk up by yourself. So simple step, just live a life of surrender and devotion. Practice that every day and it, your walk with the Lord will be so beautiful. Wow, that's so good, Nee. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, I always wake up, almost always for many, many years, wake up with, I love you, Lord. And I don't think I did today and maybe the last few days and I am more discouraged. And isn't it interesting that surrender can feel so painful. Mm. It's kind of like, uh, you know, that old story of the little girl with the fake pearls. She had to surrender oh. the fake pearls to, to her daddy to get the genuine pearls. But in that process, it felt like loss. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so surrender can trick us and feel like loss. 
And so the enemy is going to be like, no, you don't want to surrender because you don't want to have to, you know, what you want is good and where you're going is good and your ideas are good and you don't want to give that up. But the reality is if we can step over that Mm. and just say, as you said, no matter what, I love you, Lord, I surrender to you. My life is yours here. You said you tied it to joy. And mm-hmm. that's so true because it's the equivalent of Papa God then turning around and giving that little girl in that in that little story the real genuine pearls that she got to wear that far exceeded the fake ones she th- put all her love towards. And I think that's how he is with us. Mm-hmm. He just has so much better for us if we just let him be God and be good. Mm-hmm. So good. That is so true. Yep. Nate, I think we could talk for hours <laughs> about the, the lessons learned in your life that you'd be willing to share. And so let's plan to have you back. Absolutely. I would love to. This has been so much fun. Thank you for having good. me. Well, you are very welcome. I want to let our listeners know that Nee has a YouTube channel called Encourager Media. So he has been posting encouraging videos that you're not going to want to miss. He also has a website. I'll put all of this in the show notes so you can look it up, but it's Nee Adoretti. And just look in the show notes for how that's spelled. <laughs> but I'll tell you real quick, it's N-I-Y-I-A-D-E-R-E-T-I.com. And yeah, I mean, we didn't even get to hear about your where you met your wife and you have mm. a three-year-old and a five-year-old and so many good things happening for mm. you. So yep. we do need to hear more. Uh, you have already given away absolute treasures, but would you bless our audience and pray for us and impart whatever you feel led to impart? Absolutely. I would love to do that. And uh, and just to add to that, um, I have a f- uh, free ebook on my website. It's how to find peace in the midst of chaos, and it's free to download. If you go on my website, niyadirecti.com, just put in your name and email, and to get to your inbox. So that's just a free gift. Um, just to, I just love sharing what God has given to me with yeah. people. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's just let me pray. Jesus, we love you and we thank you. And we're just so thankful that you are kind, that your kindness leads to repentance. That's what your word says. And we just want to spend some time right now to repent of every way that we may have knowingly or unknowingly pushed you aside and relegated you to the bottom of the pile. And today we declare that you are Lord of our lives that our lives revolve around you. You are the center. We position you as the center of our lives because we know that the strength we need to overcome every struggle, every challenge that come our way comes from your presence. And so, Lord, I bless everyone listening today with just that awareness of knowing that you will never leave them nor forsake them, that they are covered, they are secured, they are surrounded by your goodness and your kindness. I pray for everyone who is struggling with identity. Maybe they're struggling with not feeling good enough, struggling with uh, just doubting themselves, that you will open their eyes to see the beauty you've put inside them. That before the foundations of the world, you had a plan and a purpose to create a tribe of humans who will carry your glory. And they are a part of that puzzle. You are a part of that puzzle. So Jesus, bless this once, and we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Nia. It's been an honor and a joy and a privilege to interview you. I hope we get to do it again in the future. And I just want to thank our listeners. You've been listening to your kingdom journey with our guest, Nia Adorete. Thank you for working hard to get through the internet difficulties and pressing through because it was worth it. Amen. Thanks for listening to Your Kingdom Journey. Isn't my guest amazing? Their breakthrough tips were shared to help you fulfill your destiny. Did you benefit? If so, please leave a review with comments on whatever platform you're listening from, like iTunes or Spotify. And also, would you support our amazing guests by exploring their products and website? 
you can click the links in the show notes. And before you go, take advantage of the $10 savings off my e-course, Dare to Discover You. You can sign up on my website, ClaudiaClan.com. I bet you know someone who needs to listen to this podcast. Would you share it with them? And finally, until we meet again next week, I ask Father God to keep you and bless you all the days of your kingdom journey.